And thank you for joining another episode of the Leech Protocols AMA sessions with our guests and partners. Um, hey, hey everyone. I am adding Vlad as the speaker. And hey, Julia, can you raise a hand so I can make you a speaker? Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Yep. So, hey, Julia. So, I'm I'm adding you as the co-speaker as well. Hello, hello, everybody. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, Alex. Hey, Vlad. Great hey, to nice be to meet here. You. Nice to meet you. Thank hello, you for everybody. joining. Thank you for joining. I just want to make a short intro of what's going on today. And uh, after that, we can go right into our agenda, okay? So, um, actually, I just want to make the short intro about the Leech Protocol. And after that, we will go to the uh, our guest project. And uh, what is the Leech Protocol? We build the one-click application to harvest and get yields from the major layer one and layer two blockchains. Um, and this is done from the one interface, which is uh, which you, you can find at app.leechprotocol.com. And we are going to connect to the major blockchains. Right now we have uh, three of them. And by providing liquidity uh, to one of our mixed pools, you are uh, you are you you can go to the different pools. Uh, simultaneously, uh, meaning that your liquidity is being splitted and separated across uh, separate pools based on the chosen risk level. And, uh, and the thing that why you should like this, because you don't need to pay all those fees and all the fees for, and uh, all the swaps and bridges, etc. You don't need to do this. Everything is being done under the hood. And uh, at, the mem at the moment right now, uh, all the fees are being paid by the Leech Protocols team. Another thing, uh, an update that we are running the fifth incentivization at Epoch right now, and the claim button, uh, if you provided liquidity for, for the previous Epoch is uh, right now being live, so you can claim your rewards. And the next six Epoch is going to be live from from today actually so if you provide liquidity for the next two weeks you will be eligible for the rewards for the next epoch and um, this is uh this ama session with our guests from this from the cirrus foundation and the cirrus wallet uh is the is one of our initiatives to educate community about the DeFi and the crypto in general. And uh, I think we will cover some basic topics uh, about entering the crypto today and how to become like, and why to become liquidity provider. I'm, I'm really interested to hear more from the Julia's background and the, what is the Sirius Foundation and what is Sirius Wallet. And after that, I think Vlad can share his own background and experience uh, how he entered the uh, the crypto space so julia uh, can you please introduce yourself your background and the project please yeah for sure first of all super great to be here and to rep cirrus so i'll introduce cirrus first to start um Really, to put it simply, at Cirrus, our focus is driving the next evolution of Web3 wallets. So for us, it's about putting the user back in control over not just currencies, but also our data. And so really, for us, the mission is to putting the user back in control of those digital assets in a very seamless way, which is through our Web3 wallet. And... I would love to do a little bit of a, you know, a background of our story, but, you know, to start off, our key product is really in our flagship product is the Web3 wallet. It's a Chrome extension that you can really download in under five minutes and already join the Web3 ecosystem. And one of the greatest things about it is really its ability to seamlessly onboard users into Web3, which I think is so, so important because there are a lot of limitations around that. 
So as a user, you're able to seamlessly turn your data into digital currency and then leverage that value in a lot of different ways uh, in the Web3 ecosystem, whether that means uh, reinvesting it or swapping it into a different asset. For example, Bitcoin with a store of value and you know transacting in the wallet as well. So it's a fully functional wallet as well as almost like your data vault or your identity vault in this digital economy. That's a little bit about Sears and the core product to start. And I guess to introduce myself as well. So I've been with Sears for two years. And funny enough, I actually, before this, was in a regular kind of corporate job. I had graduated with a business degree and really started off my career in advertising and marketing. But I really just felt super drawn to Sirius and the mission to bring this technology to millions of people and to empower people through Web3. So for me, I truly resonated with the mission of Web3 in general to uplift humanity, to leverage this technology and bring people into the digital economy, into the financial economy with less barriers. So I very quickly quit my job and to my own surprise, ended up in a company with all guys. I'm you know, the only girl still, but that's gonna change soon. We have an incredible team that's really focused on you know, innovating in the space, creating something different and putting our users at the forefront. So yeah, really excited um, to continue our mission, continue building in this space and also collaborating with awesome partners such as Leech Protocol that are also driving and educating people about Web3, because I think that's a very important topic. And that's something that I'm really passionate about um, because a lot of times when we're in Web3, we think that it's like this sacred community and people that don't get it just don't get it. But I really do feel this responsibility to make sense of it in simple terms to people outside of the industry, because in my opinion, that is how we're going to drive adoption um, in institutions, to retailers, to, um, you know, just users around the world, whether they are in developing countries or in developed countries, it does stem from education and from use cases. And most importantly, giving value back to the user. So that's also a huge kind of anchoring point for us at Sirius is always value back to the user. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you for your intro. Uh, Vlad, probably you should say a little bit about your background because I see new people yeah. joining today. Of course. Uh, my name is Vlad. Uh, I'm now an advisor of Leech Protocol. I started my crypto journey since 2016 from the Bitcoin talk and uh, uh, bounty companies and ICO there. Even uh, now I, I still have my Bitcoin talk account. Then we are, uh, we, we was uh, in the interception of uh, DeFi summer and we build a few protocols uh, in DeFi, it's uh, wallet, DEX and the Lending protocol. And uh, I'm fully skinned in the game. I have all my assets in crypto. And uh, for now, I see my goal is to drive the adoption, uh, to make uh, the like bottomless experience is not possible, but we will try. Uh, so to make an experience like uh, you are renting scooters uh, is the same as providing liquidity. Like you are opening any application from the App Store and plugging in there from the Apple and then uh, paying from Apple Pay or Google Pay and that's it. So for me, that's uh, a goal to make our experience in DeFi the same with uh, uh, usability and uh, all of this UX like in Web2 because uh, in Web2 we have more adaptive and more uh, adoption for people. But in Web3 we have more decentralization, more honest and uh, more sensor, sensor proof than in Web2. So that's that's from my side. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Julia, I, want, I would like you to put any comments uh, for your project in the comment section. So everyone who is listening can follow Sirius Foundation uh, profile. Uh, so feel free to put anything that you want there. And guys, please follow our guests. Uh, and please follow our own account, which is Leech Protocol. Uh, and uh, I just want to say that we will have some 
uh, Q&A session in the end of this um, this space, and we will have some cookies for the best questions. So just go right now. We just have five comments um, under this um, tweet, under this post, as I see right now. So go and uh, put your questions there, and we will try to to pick the best. So you can ask anything about the Leech Protocol. You can ask anything about the Sirius Foundation and the Sirius Wallet. And you can ask probably anything about the way that we can or should collaborate between uh, our two projects. So I think uh, that's that was a great start. And I think we can move to the first question. And the first one, I think um, it's gonna be for Julia, and uh, this is, um, can you please describe your first steps to enter crypto? And after that, maybe you can elaborate more uh, about the serious approach, how to onboard the billion users, because we have this AMA session called onboarding billion users, right? So Julia, can you please elaborate more? Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I'll start off and share my experience when I was first entering crypto and just how much fun I had figuring it all out. So if you're new to crypto, do not feel intimidated about all the intricacies of this industry and the jargon words, because behind all of that, it's it's really quite simple. So I guess my experience and the first thing you, you really truly need to enter the space is a wallet or using a centralized exchange. And so depending on where you live, so I'm in Canada and it's not super easy to, to onboard from Canada. I remember I had a lot of struggles to first get into the Web3 space and actually get my first crypto. So one of the ways to do that is either have somebody send it to you and you can get your first wallet, which my first wallet was a MetaMask. Um, it's a non-custodial wallet, which means you hold all the custody of your assets. And, and in simple terms, that just means that you hold the keys, you hold all the, you know, all the passwords to say of where your assets are. Um, so that was kind of, I, I first started off with a centralized exchange and the difference between a centralized exchange and obviously a wallet um, or a decentralized exchange is on a centralized exchange, it's it's usually the first entry point for most people. Um, and there you're putting your custody on the centralized exchanges. So you're actually putting your money there and you're using your bank. And I actually remember when I did it, I had my bank call me many times because they flagged it as like a security concern. And it was it was quite funny because they really they really had no idea what crypto was, how to use it. And unfortunately, regulatory concerns are a big issue. And it's a difficulty when you are entering crypto because there's a lack of knowledge and there's a lack of understanding behind what does it all mean. So that was a big problem that I had first entering the space. And that's why we also need better solutions in onboarding into Web3 that are more seamless with less barriers. So as a first step, really getting a wallet is kind of, it's like your access card. Think of it as your access card into Web3. And what is Web3? It's just this new digital economy that gives us an opportunity to use different instruments that are a part of it. You know, we, we can look at DeFi as being one of those new financial systems or this financial house now online that we can use with our you know, digital currency, cryptocurrency that we store in our wallet. So the first thing you really want to do when you're entering this space is figure out how to move money around. If you're unable to do that in a centralized exchange, there are some ways to do it depending on where you are. Look for those applications that allow you to onboard into the space. And then once you're in, it's much easier for you. Um, you can have multiple wallets. That's what I do. Um, and on the wallet front as well, as you get into the space, for instance, you can start off with, you know, let's say MetaMask is your first wallet or your Cirrus is your first wallet. And that's a soft wallet, meaning it's like, it's online. It's a web, web extension versus a hardware wallet, which is your Ledger wallet. And, you know, there's Ledger, there's other wallets, but Ledger is the one that I use. 
And that's a hardware wallet, which means that you're able to store your assets offline. And essentially, why is that a good thing? Because you're able to maintain more security um, over those assets rather than holding them online. So that's a little bit about wallets and my personal experience. And from a serious perspective, the reason that I truly love Sirius as a wallet, and, and this is not you know, a biased opinion, because I remember me when I was first starting out and just like how many, how many struggles I had, first understanding crypto, and then two, getting into crypto. Um, those are probably my biggest like pain points. So with Sirius, we simplify it because we say, hey, here's a Web3 wallet that you can now actually earn your first digital currency. And for some, it truly may be their first digital currency, whether they are in an emerging market um, or in a, develop, you know, in, de in a developed nation. But all you really need to enter Web3 um, is an internet connection. And that really what sets it apart from a traditional banking system where you need to go create a bank account. You need to pass all these checks. You know, they check your credit score. They, they check everything. They do like KYC, like know, know your customer, collect all your information. In Web3, it's different because you don't necessarily have to give up that information or it's under your consent how much you share and not share. And so with Sirius, you're able to earn your first digital currency through the value of your data. And the reason that that is so important to emphasize is because I think people don't realize how much our data is worth and it's really worth a lot. I mean, just in one year, Meta earned over $112 billion dollars from ad revenue. And that's a huge number. So imagine we were actually a part of that equation and we're able to monetize in that value and capture that value. So with Sirius, you're able to capture that value and then leverage it in the Web3 ecosystem. It's a very simple entry. If you go download our Chrome extension right now in, um, you know, on Chrome, in under five minutes, you have officially begun your journey in Web3. So it is a simplified start, and that's what I truly recommend for everybody who's just getting into crypto, because I know it can seem quite intimidating, but if you ever have any questions, just DM me and we can walk through it together. Absolutely fantastic. So everyone who is listening right now, this, this space, just do your own research, go and download the extension and try uh, the Sirius Wallet and get back. Uh, to this space and, and tell what you think. So, uh, Vlad, maybe we can rephrase the question and ask you uh, what are the first steps to enter the DeFi instead of crypto? What do you think? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Uh, I can tell my story how it was. Uh, so, in uh, early 2020, uh, I came uh, with um, all DeFi stuff, so I just uh, understood what's the liquidity pools uh, from videos on YouTube, and uh, I uh, invested a bit in Uniswap, but I didn't recognize and didn't know what it is, how it works, why this is, uh, like, wh what's this? So. Uh, all questions uh, which I have, like what and why and uh, what it is. Then I start uh, using all of the products around. So uh, those times, uh, I remember it was the website, uh, it's called DeFi Pools. Uh, it's kind of like DeFi Llama, but before DeFi Llama for all Ethereum products. And uh, those times, uh, was no any other chains uh, yeah it was drawn of course it was uh, a lot of other chains but i mean no only vm chains with defi products it was only ethereum and i started with uniswap uh, then i received the airdrop from a uniswap with uh, 400 uni and uh, that was a huge motivation for me to test all of the products around so to test compound yarn finance uh, uh, Balancer, uh, InstaDub, SushiSwap, and then I started understand what it is and how it works, what is farming, what is the incentivization, how to provide liquidity. And uh, the rule uh, from this story for me that, um, uh, of course, you can try to learn crypto. You can try to find as much as possible articles or videos, but uh, the more important is try like it's to love crypto so try to love it how how you can love something 
the only way is uh, uh, these things should be familiar to you so you should understand uh, what's under the hood like what's the history and how it works and uh, uh, plus you should have the emotion from it like the positive emotion and uh, the way how you can get the positive emotion uh, is uh, to explore the products and receive some reward based on this emotion you can easily continue exploring uh, next one and next one and next one and um, after a few years uh, i understand another one rule that um, it's not important how much money you can try to earn now, like for tomorrow or during the week. The more important is to live inside of the industry as much as possible because you will be able to receive all of the opportunities around. And the thing is that uh, if uh, you want to join uh, the crypto world, uh, the DeFi, you came to the industry and uh, you want to earn now, like, or tomorrow or for yesterday already tons of money uh, that uh, will put you at the risk that if you will lose all of your assets you will have the bad emotion about the industry and about the crypto and that's uh, really many people around who are talking like hey that's a bubble that's a shit it's not working it's a ponzi why they're talking in such tone of voice because they received the bad emotion from using all of it and uh, that's a third rule here that uh, don't put you on the risk try to diversify don't put all of your assets inside of the one product try to explore and uh, another uh, topic what i want to uncover that uh, if you have already some assets you are have some savings and you are able to invest ten thousand that's okay you can start with uh, exploring the liquidity providing the liquidity pools the access uh, but not of course for all of your assets but if you don't have uh what you definitely still have that's a time and uh, that's important so you can open as much as possible test nets and try to understand how it works, what is the wallets, what is the DEXs, try to uh, push the buttons and uh, even on the test net without the gas fees, uh, try to understand it. And uh, after a few test nets, you will definitely receive the reward from it. Uh, like uh, the early bird, the beginner uh, user from start, and uh, you will be able to take this reward and then reinvest it. So if you have time, please put all of your effort effort to explore as many products as possible uh, in the cheapest way. If you have money, please don't put all of them in one product and uh, try to start with the beginning, like what is the liquidity pools and how it works. Great. Thank you very much. I just want to remind that this this space is the part of the Yield Farm Academy. And if you do not want to miss another episode or another lesson with the partners, so just follow our Twitter account and follow our socials to stay updated. And I see that we have 32 questions. I think we can wait at least for a 50 to start picking something interesting. And um, um, so, guys, uh, imagine that you have some liquidity, right? And um, what are the most basic steps if you want to use this liquidity in some way in crypto and not just hold it? It doesn't matter is it like stables or ETH or anything else. Uh, of course, this is not the financial advice and do your own research, but still, do you have any ideas how to simplify for everyone to explain what is like a liquidity provision and how anyone can become a liquidity provider in any way? Um, anything, uh, any thoughts on, on this, uh, Julia, for you, please? Yeah, for sure. Uh, in terms of liquidity and, and really being a liquidity provider, essentially what that means is you as a participant in the Web3 ecosystem, because 
when you are in the Web3 ecosystem, you're able to now participate and also put up um, a stake um, or a certain amount and earn from that. So as a liquidity provider, what you're doing is you're really putting up a pair of two assets. Let's say it's um, USDT and USDC or whatever the case may be. Um, and you're using a platform where then you're able to supply that into this pool. And the reason that it's called a liquidity pool is because you're putting these assets into, you know, picture this imaginary pool and you're having other people in the system come into this pool and dip into the pool in order to take one or two of those assets. So as a liquidity provider, you are essentially putting your assets up in order to kind of provide the operations and the security around um, around the, the things that are happening in Web3. And you're able to earn on the trading, um, on the transaction fees there. So that's really your, your yield, the things that you earn, and you can use different platforms for that. So that's a simplified approach to it. It's something that I'm still also kind of dipping my toes into and learning because the learning doesn't stop in this industry. But again, why is being an LP good or it's a great thing to try out? Well, like Vlad said, it does invoke an emotion where you are able to earn and you're earning a much higher rate than let's say if you hold your you know, money in your savings account in the traditional banking system. Um, the percentages are more higher compared to like 0 0.05 or whatever we are earning or really not earning when we're leaving our money in the bank. So of course it's not investment advice, but it is to say that Web3 provides us a new avenue to actually get better control over our finances and be more sovereign in our decisions around what happens to our money and the value that we can actually capture. So whether you're, do, you're providing liquidity or you're doing staking, which means you're locking up some of your tokens on um, a platform, let's say like Aave, or no, Aave is for lending, sorry, um, Lido, you're able to then, again, earn a, a higher return on that asset, a higher return in comparison to traditional systems. So it is offering you a better opportunity to, to really get greater success when it comes to your money and your finances. And the reason that I'm emphasizing the word your is because it really is your assets in Web3. It's not the bank. It's not any institution. You have control over your money and you're able to decide, well, what am I going to do with that money now? So that's my perspective on it. I'm sure Vlad has a lot of great things to share as well. Yeah, I, I just have a quick question. So let's imagine a situation when you earn some money inside the serious wallet. What are the options with this liquidity and this money inside the Cirrus wallet? What can I do with this um, with this crypto inside it? What are the use cases? Yeah, absolutely. I think use cases are an important point to to talk about here. So, in the Cirrus wallet specifically, let's say you've generated now some of that value in relation to your data and data is your currency now in this digital new landscape. So we have a feature that's really wonderful aside from just swapping it into another asset, let's say Bitcoin, and this is not investment advice, but definitely pro Bitcoin on my end um, as a great store of value. But what you could also do is go into the Web3 Labs in our, it's right in actually our interface. And what that is in simple terms is it's essentially an app store focusing on Web3 applications that are going to help you generate even more value. So we're expanding those products right now. Um, and that's really going to include things that open up the new financial rails in relation to Web3, whether that's staking, whether that's um, launching a node and being a participant or let's say an operator in the space, um, you're able to earn there. So for us, when we're looking at how can you leverage this value, this is something we're continuing to build on and innovate in from product perspective, because it really is about building that pathway to sovereignty um, and sustainability from an ecosystem perspective. And for the users, we want to be 
let's say the Sierra super wallet that serves as its own ecosystem and an alternative pathway from the traditional financial system. So with your Sierra wallet, you can easily get in. And once you're in, the fun doesn't stop there. You can really, you know, try all these different things, whether that means you're going to go and try yield farming. And, you know, let's say Leech Protocol is one of those wonderful applications that we have. You're going to have the options to decide what you're going to do. So the opportunities are endless, but it's really all about the focusing on reimagining the current financial system with the power of Web3. Absolutely fascinating. Thank you for for your answer, Vlad. Maybe you can add something else to the same question about like the way to become a liquidity provider. Like what are what is the simple way to to become a liquidity provider? Mm. I don't know. It's, uh, from my side, you definitely need to understand why you want to be a liquidity provider. Because in uh, crypto, you have you still have different uh, way to a lot of different ways to earn money, and there's not only the liquidity provider. This space was downloaded via spacesdown.com. Visit to download your spaces today. Someone believe in trading. Someone believe. Uh, in not uh, someone became an ambassador, someone participate in DAO, um, someone do mining, uh, even even though you still can mine a river or file coin. Uh, to be a liquidity provider, you need to have a passion uh, to uh, build uh, some kind of system around you to live uh, on the percentage which you can earn every day or monthly. And that's, um, that's the difference and that's the passion. So from my perspective, I still able to found uh, farming rates uh, like 12, 15, even 20 uh, APY uh, during the year. And uh, if you have 1 million, you can diversify it and invest inside of the farming. So you will be able to live in any country in the world because on a monthly basis, you will earn uh, $10,000 uh, from your million. And um, that's uh, a really powerful thing because sometimes people around me not so pretty, not so clever, not so, uh, I don't know, uh, you even see and understand like what was was the difference, but uh, they was in the right time and in the right place and push the right button uh, and buy some tokens and now they are rich as fuck. So the thing is uh, that uh, you should have some kind of passion about it. If you have um, liquidity providing, maybe it's for you, but uh, it's not easy to start with a low budget here. Uh, it's easy to start in DeFi in any in any opportunity which I said before, but um, in the liquidity providing, you definitely should have at least ten thousand dollars to start. But the thing is that all of the uh, all of this money uh, shouldn't be your last uh, money or all of your savings. It should be like five or ten percentage from your saving. So the thing is. Uh, that you should definitely understand is it for you or not. Thank you. So um, I think that we should move to the next question. And um, uh, I was recently looking into the data and the data showed me that uh, no one, like a retail outside of crypto, right? No one, almost no one is looking for a Bitcoin. No one is almost looking for a crypto right now. I mean, AI is like more hot topic for, for VCs these days. So like there are not that much people, new people joining crypto from outside world, right? And you are, you have your own experience of being before crypto and after, you know, right now you're in crypto. Um, so like, are you still an advocate for crypto, right? So what do you think, uh, like, do you still want to advertise someone outside of crypto and DeFi to get into? And if so, why, what are the reasons? Yeah, this is an absolutely great question. And I feel like I have so much to share. I just feel super passionate about this question in particular, 
because I think the sentiment around crypto is actually changing right now as we speak. And although it seems like, oh, well, nobody's really talking about crypto, like the numbers really show us something different. Um, just like a couple weeks ago, I was reviewing what did, uh, like, how's the performance right now in the markets? And what we're seeing here is something really, really interesting where S&P actually closed this year at 18%. When we're looking year to date, when we're looking at Bitcoin, Bitcoin closed this year 120%, which is a crazy close in comparison to the performance of the biggest companies of S&P 500. We look at Ethereum, that number is actually at 69%. And so what does that actually mean? It means that Bitcoin has been overperforming the assets that are more traditional and known to, to our economy. And, and that's just really reason number one, right? So the numbers are saying something different. As much as we're not seeing this conversation maybe being on Twitter, let's say like a lot of people are talking about AI, and, but th th we're really seeing a shift in sentiment around why crypto and why Bitcoin. And it's also not just around, you know, it's also not just around the sentiment. It's also because right now we're seeing that Bitcoin is, it's decoupling from assets that are traditional sense. Bitcoin is, it's really performing much better. And the reason is, if you really look at those numbers and, and, and try to understand why that's happening is because Bitcoin is being seen as a better store of value and a better in a sense of people are actually hedging over to Bitcoin um, rather than traditional assets right now with everything that's going on in today's economy i am really like i'm really advising people to to understand web3 and understand crypto and why it matters because the numbers tell us a different story um so that resistance can be very easily overcome if we just look at what's actually happening so we're moving into our next bull run and every single time since 2016 2017 We've actually been able to double um, or triple our peaks since that time in terms of market performance. So the performance over time has actually increased more and more. And although, let's say, in the North American markets, we're seeing a little bit of a downturn in terms of funding moving into Web3, um, a little bit of a downturn in terms of the conversations or you know, retail investment when it comes to that. We are still seeing institutions going and, and understanding these assets. And, you know, we have like a whole lineup of Bitcoin ETFs right now waiting to be approved uh, by some of the biggest institutions, which, of course, is a, is a huge topic in our industry. So from a from a North American perspective, it may seem like right now regulation is a big factor um, that may be causing this resistance. But when we look at markets that are more on the eastern hemisphere whether that is you know um india or vietnam or the philippines these are actually the regions right now um that are really really going heavy into cryptocurrency as a store of value and as a medium of exchange and i was actually reading this 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 really awesome article maybe i'll share that after by chain analysis and it was about the crypto adoption around the world and we're seeing something really interesting because we're actually seeing those countries treat crypto not as a luxury, not as like, oh, you know, I'm going to make some kind of reward here and I'm going to get these returns. They're seeing it as a necessity to actually go into the grocery store and buy something and actually put their money somewhere to avoid hyperinflation. If you look at inflation just over the last three years, it has skyrocketed that you know, I'm feeling it and I'm in Canada, I go into the grocery store, I get like a tub of hummus and I love hummus. It's gone from like $3 to $8, which is absolutely ridiculous. And this is just, think about the people right now in Venezuela, in Argentina with an inflation rate, you know, Argentina over 120%, Venezuela over 350%. That is absolutely insane to think about because money is literally melting in people's hand they're not able to afford anything and the only 
safe haven that they're really seeing right now is not the banks. People are actually moving away from the banks and moving into Web3, moving into crypto, understanding this technology, and they need a solution. They're actually in need of this. So though it may seem at first glance, people here are, you know, oh, crypto, what is it? Um, and that sentiment is actually changing because now I go to family events and everywhere I go, as soon as I say I'm in Web3 and crypto, people are actually curious to know um, because inflation's gone up, because the housing market is through the roof. People are looking for an alternative solution. You know, I had my chiropractor every time I go in for like 30 minutes, he asks me questions about crypto. We're at a point now where I'm telling him, this is the wallet that you need to get, go and buy some Bitcoin. Um, and he's like, you know, he's upper middle class income. So think about people that are lower income, where there are, and, and crypto is like a necessity at this point. So to, to your question, I am really passionate about spreading crypto and Web3 around the world, especially to emerging markets and making their entry as seamless as possible with less barriers. So that's my little tangent. But yeah, I could probably go on and on about this because I just feel super passionate about it. I mean, once you see the numbers, you just numbers don't lie, right? People do, but numbers don't. But yeah, that's a little bit from my perspective. Thank you so much. So crypto is the only answer to the inflation. I mean, the, there is like a difference between the real inflation and what and the numbers that they publish, obviously. And I think everyone sees that there is a difference and everyone perceives the crypto and the web three as the as the exit, right? And another way to hold the to hold their savings and probably for someone to get some yields from the market. Uh, maybe Vlad can add something about the, you know, are you still the advocate for the average people, person outside of crypto or no? Is it a good idea to tell more people to join or no and why? Vlad, over to you. Excuse me, I had some problems with connection. Uh, could you could you please repeat what, what, sure. what you're saying? Sure, sure, no worries. So, uh, what do you think for people outside of crypto at the moment? Is it a good idea to advocate and advise them to step into the crypto and why? Uh, it's all our AMA sessions, uh, all my streams, uh, that's w what I what I did, what I doing and what I will do. Uh, and I think here in crypto, we have much more um, opportunities than uh, in real finance for the different countries. So, for example, if you are from Europe or from USA, you have access to stock market but if you are not in these countries uh, it's not possible to uh, even to buy stocks or to uh, leverage uh, your stocks uh, putting it into collateral and uh, making a debt position like in our lending protocols uh, in DeFi so I think that the DeFi it's uh, uh, the top of the financial spire uh now and uh, from my side i doing it uh, on a regular basis and uh, i think that's uh, that's a part how to educate people and build their financial literacy and uh, i don't know the one the one the one problem about it that's um, the adoption uh and like julia said that uh, Everyone talking about the BTC uh, in compared to, for example, uh, Nasdaq S and P fifty. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's a problem because now people thinking like, oh, BTC is um, not uh, on the top. It's not even worse. Uh, like it's double of the price. But uh, in a moment when BTC hit the seventy k. Every screen in the world, every TV, every show will say the BTC now on the top. 
and we will have the same uh, thing as always everyone will try to buy crypto we'll try to understand what it is we will have the organic liquidity we will have the organic users and uh, we should be ready till that time we should have all of these updates like account abstraction we should integrate uh, web three aus to simplify the onboarding for the people because honestly no one want to uh redraw the 12 words on a paper honestly no one want to know what is the gas price and what is the blockchain nodes and how it works why not because we are so stupid because we already have the easy life inside of the web too we already have all of these banking apps and uh, they are simple if you have any problems you can use support and uh, that's uh, like a native ux because uh, we cannot change the trend we only can the update this trend with more security with more sense and proof with more decentralization but if someone don't want to know how it works under under the hood he shouldn't it's okay it's a choice and now in our field crypto don't give this choice to all of the people or you are a professional user or you're not using this i i mean the DeFi. thank you very much so i think we can have a just a really quick poll here in the comments if you think that we will see 100k before we see 10k just write down the comment like bdc to 100k or if you think that we will see like 10k before just write down 10k in the comments and i think we can go to the community questions and start answering them and by the way uh we will just tag uh, the the best questions and we'll try to answer them and uh, you need to put your evm bullets if we tagged you and we we said that this is the the question right so the first one goes to julia um i'm wondering to know if we can withdraw cash from web3 wallet to a bank account that then seem the end time for taxes i mean this is like for the off-ramp on-ramp plans what do you think can you elaborate on this julia yeah, absolutely. I love that question. I think this is this is very important. And an on off ramp solution is in our roadmap currently. We would love to offer this to our users where they are actually able to, you know, very seamlessly then move it in and out of their bank account. So that's absolutely something that we are working on and it's in development. And I'm very excited for this feature to be offered as well because that would almost you know, solidify and like the cherry on top of this whole seamless experience? That's a great question. Okay, please, if you think you see some interesting question under this Twitter space or X space to say, uh, I'm trying to find something and um, I ask you, Vlad and Juliet, to go and find something interesting that you want to answer as well. I think this goes um, I think this for for this series as well, right? For swap functionality, will they support partial fractional swaps? Do you have these swaps in, in your wallet, Julia? I'm not aware. Yeah, that, that's definitely something that we can consider later down the line. It's not necessarily a, a big focus for us. A big focus for us right now is really building the pathway to Web3 sovereignty within our application, within our ecosystem. So every single product, every single feature that we do, you know, implement, whether that's coming from community and what they voted. And we take that we have very, you know, with a lot of respect and honor because our community has been such a great support system. So every feature that they put forth or everything that they want to see in the application is absolutely considered. It's just a matter of priority and does it fit into the Web3 sovereign approach that we want to move forward with. 
And as soon as that's kind of built out for us, we'll be adding in more and more of these, you know, tweaks here and there to, of course, offer greater functionality to to the users, including, you know, like fractional swaps and things, things of that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. I think we have another one and I'll try to, to answer it first. And after that, it's going to be the same for Julia. How safe is your platform? Has there been any audit uh, so that it's safe from bugs and smart contracts is fully audited? Uh, from the Leech Protocols perspective, we have already done two audits from a hacking um, security firm. And I think we'll have another one when we will introduce uh, new functions and new features. So we are uh, looking every day on our smart contracts and we have actually the security, chief security officer on board. So the security is the priority number one for our uh, software, uh, even despite that we are still in the beta mode meaning that we do not allow more than 30k deposits and more than 1 million in the TVL. So security is number first for us. And uh, what's your approach to the audits and the security in a serious wallet, Juna? Yeah, totally. Would love to would love to go into that as well. I think security is key and you know security and transparency are the two the two core standards in Web3 as well. So for us, we've also worked with Hacken for most of our audit audits, as well as Hellborn. They're really the prominent players in the security space um, to do those audit audits, whether that's a smart contract audit, whether that's a token audit. Um, so all of that is public information and available as well. So for us as well, internally, as head of operations, this is something that we really focus on. As we continue to scale our application and bring more users in and lift off the gates, we actually had something called the 10x approach where we move from, you know, a thousand users to then 10,000 to then a hundred thousand. And that's really how we want to bring users in at every stage of that, let's say new door of entry. Uh, we are working with, again, security firms that are checking our code that are checking, you know, everything that we're doing. And we're also even working with um, other firms outside of that for emergency response plans, for you know um, things to do with data breaches, and how do we best prepare our internal unit to ensure that the user assets and data are secure? That's a huge priority for us, and we have you know, David's not here, but if you guys uh, want to meet David, actually listen to our yesterday's AMA, where we talked a lot about our token update that may be as well useful or interesting to, to some of you guys to hear. David's really leading up our defense. And the reason that we call it defense is that's really the focal point from how do we defend our ground? How do we defend our users against all the crazy externalities that do happen? So for us, it's a huge priority to ensure that we're taking internal measures, external measures as well to, to prioritize that in our operations? That's a great question. I'm happy somebody asked that. Thank you. We got so many questions for you, by the way. And I think I'll, I'll uh, ask another one. It's going to be related for the mobile app beta in Q4. What are the key features or capabilities you plan to test out first? Because we don't have any plans for mobile apps. So it's for you, Julia. I love it. You guys are just throwing every question at me today. Um, these are this is a great question. <laughs> it's um, community questions. I'm yeah, sorry, but this we is, have this so is, much This is what I for sign you. up for. Just, just rapid fire all day. In terms of mobile application, so when you're looking at a roadmap that was posted previously, that has a little bit shifted because we took a pivot focusing more on our wallet as a service B2B play. The mobile application is still in our roadmap and it will be launched in 2024. We're going to release an updated roadmap. That's, you know, that's, that's, that's a promise. I I'm leading that initiative, making sure that's updated. And so. For the mobile application, we have not started testing it yet, but again, our focus there is once we start to really go into mobile, our focus is to onboard more and more users because we already know that looking just like in emerging markets, 70% 
of those users are only on mobile. And so for us, seeing the nature of our mission and our vision at Sirius, we want to get it into as many, into the hands of as many users. And that's on a B2C focus, but on a B2B play as well, with any partners that we integrate, having mobile compatibility is key. So as soon as we have more updates around product development, you'll know. And another great way to stay updated with us as well is every single month, we release a month in review. And you can find that on our website under the team section in Notion. I am like the queen of Notion. It's a fantastic tool. And we use it for everything to do with like ops and, and organization and, 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 you know, providing updates. So there is probably the best place as well to really go into the depths of where we are in terms of our, um, you know, our focus, our roadmap, our product. So every single month we release a review of what we did, where we're going. And it's, it's just a great way to stay updated with what we're doing. We wanted to put that out for community. And the reason is, again, transparency and building that trust with new people coming into our ecosystem and existing supporters that we've had for a while. Hopefully that, that answers your question in some way. In some way. Thank you. I think completely answering the community question. Um, I I got just one question and we are going to wrap wrap it up if you don't see anything else that you want to answer. Uh, it's going to be for both of you. Uh, so like imagine you have a magic stick in your hand and you just can um, change one thing in the world to increase the adoption in crypto. What would it be? Vlad, this is for you first. One thing to increase the adoption. Yeah. Uh, from my side, that's uh, a revision of the whole UX inside of uh, the DeFi. So if we gonna make it more easier than even the taxes, because on taxes you usually have the KYC. Here we don't have KYC, and if we will add the account obstruction model with the gasless payments, and if we will do the onboarding to DEPS uh, more easier, uh, it's going to be uh, mind-blowing. And uh, that's uh, that's the way uh, for the Leech protocol. So uh, we are on these trails. Thank you. And um, Julia, what's your approach to change this world? Wow, what what a loaded question. I would absolutely love to change the world. Um, if I had a magic stick right now and I would, you know, make a wish that is for the greater of society, what would I want in terms of crypto, in terms of Web3? As simple as this answer may sound, I think one thing that I would really want to do is make Web3 and crypto accessible from one, a knowledge perspective, and two, from an entry perspective. Because I think really there's such a bias around crypto depending on where you go into the world. If you go into a developing region, people know about crypto because they need to know about crypto. Otherwise, they may not be able to pay their, you know, their rent or buy food or whatever the case may be. But there's still a little bit of this bubble around Web3 where it's like, you know, it's like the cool kids at school. You can't sit with us a little bit, even though we're such an open community. We're so welcoming to everybody. And even when I first started, like everybody was willing to help me because I just wanted to soak up all the knowledge. So for me, it really does go back to opening up and simplifying what this technology can really do for people, making it relatable making it clear what they will get from a value perspective and and then the how right so i think we did that today i really hope that people who are listening got that effect from this ama because we we, we shared some educational content and we also provided the use cases around the how how can you get into web3 right now you know you can you can do it after this call if you're still not in the space and you just you just got that that whiff of inspiration of that inner fire in you to go and do it start and do it and ask questions because one thing i will say is 
you don't learn by theory, you learn by doing. And especially in the Web3 space, you can sit there and read about Web3 all day, all night. And it's great for foundational knowledge. But until you get out there, um, you know, it's like dating. Until you go out on this actual date and, and meet people and talk to people, you're not really going to know who your best match is or what's, what you really want to achieve from this industry and how it can benefit you. So learn and do. Um, yeah, if I had a magic stick, that's what I would do. I would, I would open up access and simplify what is Web3 and how you can join this movement. And another point that I want to say here, because, because it really feels, you know, I feel very resonant to this, but Web3, when it's talked about, is talked as like, yes, this is a financial evolution. This is the next wave of the digital economy. But moreover, Web3 also requires us to shift our thinking because it's putting more responsibility and ownership to the individual. And if you look at our society, we're used to following the rules, we're used to following the norms, and we're used to like, you know, just doing what we're supposed to be doing. So this is a breakdown of a system and a building of a new system. And it does require us to really own, own our decisions, own our actions, own our financial health, and own our financial wealth. So that's what I would say. Um, as my last as my last point i guess there thank you so much i think this was an absolutely lovely space great energy great insights and um if you want to uh, join another episodes of the yield farming academy and ama sessions with another guest follow each product allen obviously go and follow julia and the serious wallet and if you want to get more updates from from the Sirius Foundation, I think we should wrap up everyone who um, who asked your questions and we answered them. Just provide the EVM wallet so we can send the cookies. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I think that's all for today. Thank you, Oleks, for hosting, and thank you, Vlad, for your insights, and thank you to all the listeners uh, for really being present and listening. I'm sure you guys have awesome things to share, and thank you also for your questions and your curiosity. Thank you. This was nice. I'm a session. I'm glad to meet you. Yes. All right, everybody. Well, enjoy the rest of your Thursday.